Star Wars 7x7 episode 2425. Today another Mando Memo segment and we are going to look at what we learned in season 2 about Migs Mayfeld. So this is rather a big M alliteration episode. Punch it! Hey Rebel Razor, I'm Alan Voivod and this is Star Wars 7x7, your daily dose of Star Wars joy. And thank you so much for joining me for it. So, Migs Mayfeld, played by the comedian Bill Burr, is back in Star Wars The Mandalorian. He appears again in a single episode for season two, just like he was in a single episode for season one. And they deepen the character's backstory and indeed his whole, you know, philosophical situation. And maybe that's the result of having time to contemplate his crimes, being sentenced for 50 years in the Carthon chop fields for his involvement in the death of a New Republic corrections officer and the springing of a New Republic prisoner from a correctional transport. But back in season one, all we knew about him really was that he was a mercenary and a former Imperial sharpshooter. And that's pretty much it. And <laughs> now we find out that he actually has a grudge against his former employers, the Galactic Empire. And what's remarkable about this particular bit of Star Wars storytelling and expanding Migs Mayfeld's background story is that they are tying it into Star Wars storytelling in other media. Particularly Operation Cinder, we find out that Migs Mayfeld was a part of that under General Valen Hess. And up until this point, Operation Cinder hadn't been mentioned in any live action media. It's only been mentioned in books and comics and video games. And in case you need the refresher, the deal with Operation Cinder is that the Emperor set up this thing where in case he died, he would send a bunch of the Imperial Imperial survivors to destroy a bunch of planets randomly. No strategic value or proposition to it, not trying to deny the Republic or the Rebellion resources or anything like that, just basically random terror. So now Operation Cinder has bubbled into awareness in live action through the Mandalorian, and the planet that's referenced, Burnin Khan, is a planet that was first mentioned in Star Wars Uprising, the mobile game. And one of these days we're going to talk about that mobile game because it does do a lot for storytelling in the immediate aftermath of Return of the Jedi, particularly in the Anoat system where Bespin is, where Hoth is, and now Burn and Khan as well. So it seems as though, and I think it's probably a reasonable conclusion to which you could jump, that the reason why Bill Burr is no longer with the Empire, why Migs Mayfeld is no longer with the Empire, is because of the events of Operation Cinder, which in discussion with Valen Hess, the general who led the Operation Cinder action at Burn and Cone, a whole division of the Empire's troops was wiped out to enable the operation. And we're talking about thousands upon thousands thousands of the Empire's people that were sacrificed as a result of the Operation Cinder action on Burn and Con, and that seems to be the thing that drove Migs Mayfeld away from the Empire and into a life of mercenary action. And there's almost an irony about this situation because earlier in the episode in which he appears in Season 2, he's giving the Mandalorian some guff about how, oh yeah, you've got all these rules about being a Mandalorian, but when things get messy, those rules get bent, those rules get broken, they get thrown out the window. And of course that serves as a bit of foreshadowing for The Mandalorian later in the episode. But when you hear Migs Mayfeld talk about it, it makes you think kind of in a negative fashion. Like you'll have these, you know, very high and mighty ideals, but then when something bad happens, then you'll sacrifice some of those ideals. Instead, it kind of goes the other way when we find out about Migs Mayfeld and we find out that he was a participant in Operation Cinder and that was the thing that pushed him too far and the thing that made him say, all right, I guess enough's enough. I can't be a participant in this any longer. So the events of season two leave Migs Mayfeld as a free agent once again, getting to roam the galaxy and make his fortune or pursue his fortune as it were. Though I have a feeling that 
as opposed to where we left him in season one, that maybe he's going to be leaning a little bit more toward the side of the angels, or at least as much as he possibly can, and be perhaps a different kind of scoundrel if we ever meet him again, which I don't know. I, I would like to think that we're going to see him again in season three or beyond. I, I don't think we're done with him just yet. And I'd love to know what you think. Do you think Migs Mayfeld will reappear in The Mandalorian at some point down the line? Chime in on any of the posts for this at facebook.com slash sw7x7 or youtube.com slash sw7x7. And that is going to do it for this episode of the show. It just remains for me to say thank you so much for joining me for it, as always. And may the Force be with you, wherever in the world you may be. Star Wars 7x7 is not endorsed or sponsored yet by Lucasfilm Limited, Disney, or 20th Century Fox, and is intended for entertainment and information purposes only. Star Wars, the Star Wars logo, all names and pictures of Star Wars characters, vehicles, and any other Star Wars-related items, are registered trademarks and or copyrights of Lucasfilm Limited, other respective trademark and copyright holders. May the Force be with them. All original content is copyright 2021 by Star Wars 7x7. We hope you love it.